Hey guys, Zen here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over three game updates and some of the biggest changes so far for 2020 in Rainbow Six Siege. The updates leading up to year five are becoming more and more interesting, and of course, I'm here for all of it. So let's not waste any time, guys, and get into this. First up, I wanted to quickly go over and give some initial thoughts to the big changes that took place recently. Now, in my last video, we went over everything that's actually been changed from Ella and Echo to Maestro and Ying. It's all there, so if you haven't yet, go check it out but i've since spent some quality time with the patch and i've got some thoughts for you obviously the most standout change at least from how it feels is ella and her scorpion buff so the first 16 shots of the magazine have reduced recoil and yes you absolutely feel the difference the thing about the scorpion which goes double time for console is that the recoil isn't predictable in any way and for the most part just goes all over the place in the live game the recoil pulls up to the left and then finishes somewhere off to the right and simply pulling down just isn't enough to keep it reliably stable. It's been a while, but I could only imagine what you console guys go through trying to be productive with this weapon. But let me assure you that after this buff, Ella is back. There just is no other way to put it. Now, I don't want to overdo it here, but from the beginning, Ella was always designed to be able to fend off multiple attackers on her own. That was kind of the gameplay loop that she was prepared for. And with the way they balance the Scorpion now, I think she can finally get back to accomplishing that. The thing is, you won't be able to just hose down everything in sight with laser-like accuracy like you could with her in year two. After those 16 bullets fly, it'll be time for a reload or you'll just have to find a way to keep the weapon stable in its current state because after those 16, it goes back to what it is now. So basically uncontrollable. My biggest tip, and I really think you guys should know this, it's super important, but ditch the compensator of the weapon and replace it with a flash hider barrel attachment. Now I know throughout the years that the barrel attachments haven't always been the most concerning factors in Siege, but recoil control can absolutely win or lose rounds. And so with an update like this, I think it's incredibly important to take this into consideration. The flash hider is for better recoil when burst firing, and Ellis Scorpion is now tailor-made to be burst fired. With the flash hider, you'll be able to maintain a consistent recoil pattern that eventually you can hopefully master because it is predictable and learnable, unlike what we're used to today. Now, guys, I know it's subtle, but that small tip might reel in a few extra kills for you, and I'm hoping you'll attribute that to checking out my channel, so cheers to that. Echo and Ying are the other two I wanted to focus on here, and overall, the changes aren't as substantial as we may have initially thought. For starters, Echo Drones now do have the lights, and the interaction between him and Dokubi has essentially flipped, where she hard counters him, but he really feels no different to use, and he's just as capable as he is today. I think it's pretty clear that the devs want less Echo bans, and this was probably just one step towards that, but really, this is totally reliant on the pick rates of Dokubi, and how popular popular she is or isn't in the meta. Other than the lights, the only thing that has changed is how Dokubi interacts with him and Yokai, but it's not like Dokubi is Twitch or even Ash for that matter, so unless she's on the board, you may never notice the difference. Now I'd give anything for the return of Maestro's ACOG, and so I'll go on the record and say that Echo should have lost his ACOG over Maestro, and that would have probably helped a ton with his ban rate. For instance, when Ash lost her ACOG on her main weapon, the R4C, she fell from her peak hard. And and was almost instantly replaced by Twitch. So you Echo mains who were worried about being nerfed and taken advantage of by Doki really shouldn't be worried too much, although the ban phase is probably still your biggest fear. And then finally, as for Ying, Again, no super big difference. The Candela is now highlighted, and sure, in some very specific situations, it'll make a difference, maybe even aid in securing a kill. But if you're higher up in rank, typically you're moving in kind of behind the Candela, going in for a push, and that isn't going to change much after this. Ying is an operator I'm hoping gets more playtime in year five because she's absolutely amazing when she works, but hasn't been super popular as of recently. Moving on to our second update, we have the new events and additional teases around it. So as for the event, I think this is one of the best events ever in Rainbow Six Siege, only really being trumped by Outbreak, if you're a fan of it. The map, for instance, is incredible. The devs talked with IGN about how the event came to be, and some of the behind-the-scenes stuff and what we learned is kind of fascinating. First off, they mentioned that Greece is the place for this event. There's a blend between the sports heritage and the Olympic Games, and so what a better place to host a competitive siege training kind of simulation. Now, it can't be breezed over that this is taking place in Greece, and 
from the leak that was recently teased, we see two operators that a lot of the community has speculated are from Greece. So guys, I'm thinking that the year five season one operators will be from Greek CTUs and this event and training will all be part of the season. I know it's been a long standing wish to get Greek ops and so this might be the year to get them. Other than that, the event features a brand new mechanic that I'm actually really loving, which is the see-through bulletproof glass throughout the map. Really in no other way has this been done before in Rainbow Six Siege. It's super interesting to be on one side of the glass with an enemy on the other side of the glass. You can see each other, but you can't really hurt each other unless you make a move. It's fun. It can also be kind of funny, and it's just cool to see a different design approach to the map. The last thing to note about the map is that it was built to be modular, meaning that at basically any time, it can be moved around and things can change about it to suit different scenarios or training sessions. Now, I have thought about, well, what if they gave this power? Power to the community in a map builder of some kind. Even if it were just for scrims or something, I think a lot of people would enjoy setting up a map or playing out different strategies taken from multiplayer, and these would be the tools to do so. Obviously, that would be a massive undertaking and something that the devs would need to put a lot of resources behind. But if they did, it would kind of off balance the fact of getting less content this year, which has been confirmed. Of course, Halo kind of went in this direction with their maps for a little while, even having multiplayer matches played on custom custom made maps and so I don't know I think it would be interesting to see what the community could come up with but the event has been a lot of fun and honestly I don't think this is the last we're seeing of this Greek style stadium and this training session lore that Ubisoft is looking to build up here finally guys for our last update we're talking about the battle pass now that it's here and I'm sure you've unlocked some of its goodies I want to know is it worth it for me, I've got to be honest, with this version of it, I don't see much of my time being spent worried about the next Battle Pass item. Out of everything available, I'm really only looking forward to the Alpha Pack and the Universal Skin at the very end. The other skins available and some of the charms and stuff just aren't that appealing, and from what I've learned about Battle Passes in general, that's how they usually go, and they're really reliant on the customization items that are in play. Unfortunately, the loot here is nothing to really write home about, although I'm sure some of the skins and stuff in here are amazing to some and so I don't want to put anything down specifically but I guess I just expected more of an offering of course battle passes have been a thing for a while now most all battle royales have them and even some other shooters are starting to go in that direction over loot boxes like with Call of Duty for instance and so I feel like Siege had an opportunity to really make a difference with this one and so far at least from the feedback I've been hearing it's a little underwhelming now guys just being honest most of the feedback here is for the premium pass the one you pay real money for but as for the free pass it is a little light on content but it is free stuff so you can't really fault it here so ultimately i do think the system works out well and unlocking your tiers is simple enough but i think across the board with really any battle pass us gamers just want some amazing loot like really cool stuff to solidify the buy-in now that the game is really building up the lore and other factions like night haven are being introduced there is a lot of content that could show up in these battle passes and so i'm hoping that throughout the seasons we see some of that but guys that's it those are the updates and my thoughts to go along with them guys i have a massive video coming up like an absolute mammoth of a piece of content for you guys and i can't wait so be on the lookout until then we'll be here rounding up everything all the latest news game updates and tidbits from around the community we're talking about and so i hope you enjoy but now i want to hear from you guys if we're not getting greek operators next what country or ctu would you like to see and also how do you feel about the battle pass and the items introduced in it leave a comment with everything down below if you did enjoy this video please drop a like and subscribe with notifications if you're new with that being said it's been zen Hey. Thanks for watching. I'm out.